So it should be no surprise how strong Gekko Mori is in OPO6. It's even won a couple different tournaments and it is just generally a really good deck. But there is one card in its archetype that's always intrigued me and that is Negative Hollow. At first glance, it is really just a simple card. It just trashes one card from the opponent's hand. You get to choose it, which is nice and it has a trigger ability that remains the same. And we also have Perona, which can eat through a player's hand and as well as establish a 5k body over and over again. Now that really got me thinking, what if we just added all the other hand destruction or hand related things into a Gekko Moria deck? Is it going to be good? A few options that we have is, of course, Soap Sheep, which is a thing that really synergizes well with the eight cost Gekko Moria and as well as Rob Lucci getting out a bunch of different cards by reducing them and then KOing them. We, of course, have Great Eruption, which is nice because, you know, obviously uh, it's going to stick around for a while and as well as the trigger. So if you want to run it, you can. In this build, I decided not to. And of course, we finally have Isho, which hasn't seen play anywhere. And honestly, it takes the slot of 8 cost Gekko Moria, so it's kind of difficult to fit that in as well as to justify it. And don't forget that you can grab Negative Hollow with Dr. Hogback, which is a nice addition and very annoying if you continue to loot that against your opponent. Here's the deck list. Again, I'm not running Great Eruption in anticipation for one, it's gonna get banned anyway, and two, it's really just the trigger effect that you get the hand destruction. So I opted not to do that. And obviously we do have the Peronas uh, in, in correlation with everything else. So you can grab the Peronas with the Hodgeback and Hodgeback and get uh, negative hollow, like I said before. But overall, pretty standard I don't know if this is something you call a standard build. I'm also running the Rebecca because I found that focusing on the negative hollow, not only that you don't have the uh, counter power uh, between that and Soul Sheep, but also you just don't have that much of a hand anyway. So Rebecca kind of helps with that, not only on the defensive uh, end, but also uh, getting back things like Sabo or whatever from your trash area and then get to play all these other three costs or less cards. But the real question is, does it work? And I took it to the sim to find out. All right, we're gonna start it out with Yamato. And uh, this was interesting because you don't really mind uh, the double attacks because you want the triggers. And I kind of got lucky here because I ended up milling um, a, a Perona. And basically what you want to do is if you're going first, you want to start out with the Perona. If you're going second, then you want to start out with, um, the negative hollow and, or, uh, a, a target basically, um, to be able to, uh, uh, play and get back. So like you can probably get a Hodge back as well. Um, that'd be pretty cool. But what we do is, um, get the, uh, the Victoria back. I do believe uh after playing the hogback and then we also uh play the negative hollow to further reduce their hand and they keep taking this these uh these hits out of life they're already at two um so we're not too bad of a position here he, they do play the mihawk to play the kikinojo which is kind of annoying but that's okay and i think what we're going to do here is just swing fives um, and then play out uh, good old Rebecca. Then we're just going to go ahead and give them the extra life by swinging six and making them trash another one with Perona. Although they go to two, that's fine. They also go to seven Dawn, which is kind of scary because they can play um, uh, Hody at any point. And we do have to two Borsalinos, which I, I'm very, very much tempted to do that. So that way we're not getting double attacked. And honestly, you know, I'm playing myself right into it. But the other part of it is that I don't really have that many other better plays outside of swinging out and uh, swinging with my five keys here, which is going to be the other two options, basically playing the Borsalinos or just swing out. They do have six here, which we don't have a 2K, a little annoying. That's okay. We have a Helmepo in hand. Pretty good fodder for um, 
uh, 1k counter. And I think what we're going to do here is just uh, swing into their board. We're going to check our trash. Just make sure to see what targets we have in case we want to use leader effect. And I think what we want to do is just swing into their face. Uh, right into the Kikinojo, which is pretty annoying. They go and take this one. And I believe they take this one as well. Now, I think this is kind of where I misplay. They have an uh, Onami to pop my Perona, which is annoying. And now they have um, two 6k swings and a Hody Jones that rest both of my Borsalinos that I paid eight Don for. So in retrospect, I think I could have swung into the Kiko Nojo um, and then gave him a different life uh, and then swing into their face. Because now we're looking at a 6k swing with no blockers, etc. The only issue with that is that if I give him a different life, I basically just give them a draw and then um, Hody just comes down anyway. But uh, we just take these. Thankfully, we have 2k of power uh, out of their 6k swing. And then after that, they don't have enough to uh, take it with Hody Jones. So I definitely got lucky here. The hand destruction did help a little bit with the negative hollow. One less card to be able to defend with out of all of the battle cards that we had or the character cards that we had. And just overall, you know, it was it was a lot more fun playing the Perunas uh, in general. It was against Katakuri, everyone's favorite deck. Uh, we do go first and I wanted to open up something to play out of hand. And I think Perona is gonna be the best. Even in a normal deck, like a normal Gekamoria deck, you're gonna be opening per Perona into Katakuri anyway, most of the time. I don't think there's very many times that you don't. So we do, and we swing into what I assume is a trigger, which is a Satori. Which, uh, honestly, it's good for us, because, I mean, that's just one less card out of hand. I think I could have uh, countered out of that first Satori swing, because this next one's 7k, and just may as well do that. But that's okay. Um, I think what we're going to do here, I'm just trying to do the math. We could Helmepo, and then... Um, pop the Paro, but I think what we're gonna do is just get rid of the Absalom, swing for eight, and just keep his hand a little bit bigger than normal since we wanna play the Peronas uh, and lower his life, but he does reject, which is super random to me. He does go ahead and swing with the Paro. I ca counter with the uh, Helmepo, and then we're just gonna go right into the Perona. He pitches one, we could have swung into the Paro as well, but honestly, we may as well just go into this. Uh, the Borsling, that is. And to, to his life. Now that he has a Kikinojo, it uh, gets a little annoying. Just free bodies everywhere. And um, swings seven with the Paro. We get out with Victoria. Or Sindri. It's probably a better way to say it. He swings seven into my life. Right into a negative hollow. And I'm just checking our our drop area, our trash area. And just seeing what we have. I think giving them a potential card is fine. Ten dropping bomb was gonna come either way. And then giving them a potential life is also fine. But this uh since they did not take this one. Um, we just have to make the decision of what we want to do afterwards. So we could, um, Hina into a Rob Lucci just to remove the Paro. That's two cards on our hand that we just don't have to really worry about. But I think what we do instead is, um, play the Borsalino from the Gekka Moria. So that we have two of them. He's got two life. He can't use Amaru. And, uh, from there... Have the Mepo out. We could have just used the Sindri as well, just to mill out ourselves and have some more targets. Because the Mepo, to be honest, you know, wasn't really needed since it just minused. But it is a, an attacker versus Sindri, who isn't. So no big bomb since he is swinging eight. I'm um, just deciding what I want to do as far as to protect this porcelain leader or not. Honestly, you know, having two Borsalinos is better than one, so if I have the means, I probably will just go ahead and protect it. And 
and uh, the next wing probably was going to be at face. So that is something to consider. He does uh, swing seven, do you believe, to the Perona, which I don't think is the right move. But I guess he maybe thought that I had another 2k in hand or something. We went ahead and trashed the life because we have a lot of potential attackers, which is where um, this Helmepo is coming in, right? We want to make sure that we get to swing out. And this is one of the scariest parts about going against Katakuri. They usually put all the good stuff at the bottom of their life. And if they don't have any good stuff, then you're good to go. You know, that's just part of the RNG Casino Royale type thing. But we obviously have enough attackers and we obviously have enough of Dawn to take game. Because now, seven to lead, he only has three cards. He has to pitch two, he only has one. The last two swings, as long as the last life isn't beige, which we're in the clear on that one, um, we are good to go uh, in, in general. And honestly, if it was a, 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 a brulee or a Sanji, we can take care of it with Soap Sheep and uh, the leader swing. So there's always that. Either way, that was that match and wasn't too bad. Use a negative hollow here. And um, then, you know, this is pretty much the uh, the point where he's just going to have, you know, four to five cards in hand all, at all times. We get out of these uh, these uh, specific attacks and we attacked life because um, I wanted to see if he was going to be able to take the two life and then um, uh, go to six cards, basically. But instead... We're just going to go ahead and remove the, the Ein with uh, Hemepo Absalom from the Gecko. So again, normal stuff, pretty standard stuff that you can get out of this deck that you would in a normal Gecko, Gecko Moria deck. It's just, you know, more hand destruction and more options for for those hand destruction. Now, the only thing that I would probably look into is just counter power, right? We're playing a lot of the, the event cards. We're playing Isho, which I think... Probably would take out a uh, take Isho out just simply because it only become becomes relevant more against something like uh, Reju or the Rogue White Beard type thing, right? Uh, not very many other matchups gain that sort of hand, and more often than not, they're defending uh, with their hand to a lower hand size anyway. We did Negative Hollow with the only card that we have they had in their hand, and what we're doing here is uh, reducing with Hina into. Absalom to remove their um, beige or Beppo, sorry. And then we swung nine because they only have one card in hand. They're going to take it. And from here, there's not very many things that they can do. I'm at two life. I have one card in hand. Well, you know, they, they could have like two Zoros or something um, or two or three Zoros, really. They can play three Zoros, but uh, that is not the case. Um, even then, they would not be able to have enough Dawn to uh, to take it. So he just swings 12 to my Gecko, and we're going to swing fives. There's no other reason to. They have less cards than my attacks, and we're just going to go ahead and swing seven for the last one. So that was it. That is it. That's all you really need to know about uh, Gecko Moria hand destruction. And this is kind of funny because I have two sub sheeps in life so those last two triggers is just them also a soap sheet for the next the next card I, I think the sims broke maybe the sims just broke either way let me know what you think about this janky deck and i'll see you in the next one